I went to a few websites. I just did a Google how much water is in the atmosphere, you know. And uh, this is the USGS website, usgs.gov, Science for a Changing World. The USGS Water Science School talks about there is always water in the atmosphere. Clouds are, of course, the most visible manifestation of atmospheric water. But even clean air contains water, water in particles that are too small to be seen. One estimate of the volume of water in the atmosphere at any one time is about 3,100 cubic miles, or 12,900 cubic kilometers. And it goes on to say that uh, if all the water that's in the atmosphere were to rain down at once, it would cover the globe uh, to a depth of about one inch. And this is confirmed on a number of websites, but I'll just show you one more just for the sake of argument here. This is the Y Files, the science behind the news. They have an article, How Much Water is in the Atmosphere. It says, At any moment, the atmosphere contains an astounding 37.5 million billion gallons of water in the invisible vapor phase. This is enough water to cover the entire Earth, land, and ocean with one inch of rain. And, of course, goes on to talk about that as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of water in the atmosphere. I think we all kind of just know that, but I don't think we've ever really thought about what that means. If the atmosphere, especially over water, is made up of zillions and zillions of tiny convex drops of water, then collectively, perhaps they all combine to make one big convex lens, in which case it would act like a magnifying glass. Check this image out right here. Now, I caught this image shortly after Rick and I returned from our trip across the lake. Uh, we grabbed a bite to eat, and then we went out to the beach, and... It was still clear out, so we got the camera out and looked 46 miles across the lake to see this right here. This image is extraordinary. Okay, the boat right here, I'm going to guess, is less than a mile away. And I base that because these people walking in front of the camera here are walking across some rocks that sort of jut out and, and kind of fence in the uh, harbor area. And... They are uh, only about a quarter of a mile away from where we were when I shot this. I shot this image from right about here. This is where we were uh, looking across, and this is the area right here where those people were walking. And the boat, as you could tell uh, by the size of the people on the boat, wasn't too much further beyond that. So maybe a half mile to a mile, or at the most, I would say, away from where we were. All right, now when I was headed back to Chicago to catch my flight, I snapped this picture of the Willis Tower. And this is, if you go on Google Earth, uh, this is right about the area right here where I believe I, I was when I took that picture. Looking across, it's only about 0.6 of a mile. So I'm just a little over a half mile away and Look at the size of the tower as compared to the car that was diagonally in front of me. We were looking at the Willis Tower from this direction right here when we were on the other side of the lake. Now, okay, so let me slide the car over and shrink it down to the appropriate scale beside the boat. Do you see something rather interesting here? This building is significantly magnified. The image on the left shows the size and scale of the building next to a car at 0.6 of a mile away. The image on the right shows the same building and the same car with a boat at 46 miles away. The atmosphere really is acting like a lens. What type of lens? A convex lens or a magnifying glass. So I'm going to suggest this is what's happening. The atmosphere is acting like a lens, which magnifies the city, brings it up a little closer, and as it does so, we start to lose a little bit of the bottom of the buildings, and perhaps due to uh, the density in the atmosphere, there's an additional refraction in, that takes place that makes it drop down even more. Is that what happened? Let's look at it from another angle here, from the side view. I'll bring our graphic back in. Of refraction. Let's go ahead and orient the graphic so it better represents what we're looking at here. 
I'll angle the light rays to show the density of the air here causing the refraction and bring our lens in so we can magnify the city. It brings the city up, brings the city up, and as it does so, we start to lose a little bit of the bottom of the city, and perhaps either due to the magnification or due to additional refraction, maybe it is dropped down a little bit more, and uh, this is what we end up with. Huh. Just like we saw. Now this is a still frame from the half hour video that I did and uh, the numbers you see there are all based on the numbers that Tony was giving me based on his device. Uh, his device said it was 37 nautical miles which is 42.6 statute miles but when you plot the same exact location that we were at the exact distance you get on Google Earth is uh, 46 miles so you basically add about four miles to all the numbers that you saw in the half hour video. But I'm beginning to think if that is indeed the science, and let's just go back and hear from the experts once again what's happening with the atmosphere. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, just maybe you can, now you can just see the top of, uh, of the Sears Tower, and if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place, hopefully now you can see all of, pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings. Including, including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. So the atmosphere really is acting like a lens, according to the experts. Now, you guys don't need to go out and spend tens of thousands of dollars to get that pretty piece of paper to hang up on the I Love Me wall and put letters after your name so that you can call yourself an expert. You can be an expert with what you see here on the screen. Yep, believe it or not, go to Walmart and your advanced degree in atmospheric lensing technology uh, will cost you just a couple of dollars. You can get a, a 2x power lens for about $1.85 I think at Walmart. Get yourself some scotch tape. Then if you look in the description below you'll see I put a PNG file of a city. You can print that up, cut it out so it looks something like this what you see on the screen here. Then find a table and a chair. And okay, you're gonna bend the paper so it looks something like this. Tape the lens to the table, get a chair that's about the same height as the edge of the table. Put your iPhone on the end of the chair and the chair will act as a dolly. So you can just kind of pull the chair back and looky, looky here. Look what happens with atmospheric lensing. Wow, isn't that amazing? And you didn't have to go to college either. Now you can get in a boat and whee, drive to Chicago and wow look at that now let's compare see look at this this is how much of the city was lost simply due to atmospheric lensing now remember the experts the guys that spent tens of thousands of dollars to get advanced degrees in this stuff so that people would recognize that they're smart they told you the science really is that of a lens now, of course, the first time I posted something like this on YouTube, the Baltards came out from under every rock on this plane to uh, make fun of me and say, I didn't know what I was talking about with refraction. That's not how it works and blah, blah, blah. And they looked at the image on the lower right here of the magnifying glass showing the city and how it was all wavy and distorted. And they said, well, look, your magnifying glass made everything distorted. And Joshua Nowicki's picture was straight up and down. You're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. So uh, to alleviate the problem of distorting the edges because the magnifying glass ring is too small. Uh, I went on Amazon and I got these um, uh, plastic magnifying sheets and came up with another way of doing the same thing uh, using the sheet right here. It set the city up, a little cut out of the city, and now I've got the big magnifying glass sheet bring the camera right up to the lens. See, that's the normal view of the city. Now let's back up again. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. Atmosphere really is acting like a lens. And this is how much of the city is missing due to the lensing effect, the magnification uh, of the atmosphere. You're, you're, you're missing you know, a good portion of the city just by pulling my iPhone back on a three foot long desk. That's how much I lost. You've probably seen the meme being passed around on Facebook and everything, showing the lower portion of one of the tall buildings there in Toronto being uh, missing and they're saying, see, this is proof of the globe. And 
uh, you start seeing videos like this one. Another way to demonstrate the curve is with distant city skylines. A good example is the city of Toronto, viewed from across Lake Ontario. The city is dominated by the distinctive CN Tower, currently the third tallest tower in the world at 1,815 feet. There are many pictures online of the Toronto skyline viewed from Niagara-on-the-Lake, New York, 30 miles away. With the Metabunk calculation, we see that 486 feet of the tower, or about 26% of it, should be hidden behind the curve of the Earth from that distance. And this is exactly what we see, as you can easily tell when compared to an image of the full tower at the same scale. And let's try it again, okay? We're all the way up against the glass. Now let's zoom across the lake. And wow, look at that. The lower portions start to disappear. Now let's zoom back in to get a little closer to the one that uh, Captain Baltard was talking about here. And wow, look at this. Here's his image on the right, and here's my image on the left. Missing the lower portions of the city had nothing to do with curvature whatsoever. I've got my magnifying sheet frame, and I created a, a little stand uh, to paste the sun on it and keep it the same height over the flat surface of a table. So the sun is always going to be parallel with the surface. And uh, check this out. All right, here's the first test of a sun moving over a flat surface. And with no atmospheric magnification, it does what we might expect that it would. It gets smaller as it goes away from us. All right, now let's see what happens when we add in our atmospheric magnification. Again, water and refraction. Water causes magnification and refraction, right? So let's bring the sun back. Oh, check this out. Refraction bends the light downward. <laughs> it made the sun set on a parallel surface. As it was moving parallel, the same height, the whole way over a flat surface, the refraction caused the sun to set. Not only that, well, let's uh, bring in the beginning of that little test, and we see that it maintained pretty much the same size, too. Uh, pretty close. Ha! Uh, and of course, that's because as it's moving away, the magnification is, is still. Uh, taking place and so even though the sun's further away than it was in the beginning of the test uh, the magnification basically preserved the same size and the refraction made it set <laughs>